uh, well, okay. Uh, welcome to my video on transforming sine and cosine in degrees. Uh, this is a GeoGebra app for which I provided a link uh, in your uh, in your Google Classroom feed. And um, what I'd like to emphasize, I know you guys are going to play with it, and that's the whole point of even making this app in the first place, is for you guys to play play around with uh, the four parameters. And uh, what you see here is a black function, which is just cos of x. And it's depicted here as 1 times cos of 1 times x in degrees. But it's just cos of x, right? 1 times anything is just whatever it is. The reason those numbers are there is because a is set to 1, and k is set to 1, right? And so these numbers are really what those slider values are. When a slider value goes to 0, you don't see those values. So similarly, we have the, the sine function, which is just sine of x. We have 1 times sine of 1 times x, which, which really just boils down to sine of x. And uh, after some hacking, I was able to get this thing to work in degrees because it was originally not going to do that. Okay, so... Um, as you can see, if I treated cosine as a function and sine as a function, they certainly do behave as functions. You can see that they uh, survive the vertical line test, and you can see that there's a kind of similarity to them both. They're both the same kind of wave, except they seem to be in different positions, which is kind of odd. but that's the way cosine and sine are. It shows you that the values generated by sine and cosine are very much related to each other. There's a huge relationship and we're just going to play with the graph to show you, for example, that I can turn the cosine function into the sine function and vice versa. I can also turn the, cos the sine function into the cosine function. So let's, let's do that. So by by making the cosine function into the sine function, I have to shift it. I have to give it a vertical shift in the positive direction. I'm pointing in the positive direction. It looks like my image down there is pointing in the negative direction, but you get the idea. Anyway, so uh, which one Which one was it? It was A, K, D, and C. A and K are the stretchy and compression-y sort of things. D and C are the shifty ones, right? So um, now, a, k, and d, and c are shifting are intended to shift sine. So why don't we? Okay, I'm going to make sine look like cosine. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I have to shift. Now you can see that the pink curve looks like it should be shifting instead in the negative direction by about 90 degrees. Let's see if we can do that. Now the c shifts up and down as you can see so that's the wrong one to use i'll just set it to zero the d ah that one that one shifts left and right so we're going to go till one is smack on top of the other and you can see d is equal to negative 90 on the slider and you can see that we've created the function sine of x plus 90 degrees the other function cos of x is still just cos of x so we were just able to turn the sine function into the cosine function using a transformation. That is one of the, you know, I did say in my in my remarks in Google Classroom that the shifting and, you know, the, the shifts and compressions and stretches are the same as for every other function in the course. And I'm not lying to you. They are the same for as every other function in the course. What's different? in trigonometry are the consequences. What does it imply when I when I say that I can shift a curve left and right when we're talking about sine and cosine? Well, it, it implies that I can make the sine function look like the cosine function. I can, I can turn the sine function using sine of x plus 90 into just cos of x. So that's one of the consequences. So let's go the other way now. Let's make uh, let's make d equal to zero. And the actual same thing for the cosine, these are all the same parameters for cosine. So d and n are associated. So if I move n, now that's moving in the wrong direction. So notice I can make n equal to positive 90. 
and the positive 90 shows up in the function as x minus 90. So now the cosine function looks like the sine function. Okay, so now I can do, I'm going in both directions, I'm doing both things. Um, no, okay, so what does that imply though? Uh, uh, there's another thing that it implies, right? By now, if you've gone through, if you've gone, if you've gone as far as 5.3, You've done the work of 5.1, you've done the work of 5.2, you know what period is, you know what amplitude is, you know what wavelength is. At least I hope you do. If you don't, look it up in your book. Because I'm about to say some things that are quite profound. As you can see on the graph, clearly, sine and cosine have the same amplitude and the same wavelength. In other words, the same you know, maximum and minimum. It, both functions go as low as minus one and as high as positive one. So they have an amplitude of one. Both of them do. Both of them have a wavelength of 360. Again, follow the curve. Start from zero. Start from the origin. If you follow my mouse, you can see that it completes one cycle and then it starts all over again at 360 degrees. It's as if you went around the circle, right? It's as if you went around the circle, except now instead of degrees going around the circle, the degrees are going in a straight line and they are the x-axis. And this is what the function looks like when you turn the degrees that go round and round into an x-axis that goes in a straight line this way. All right. So the stretch, the vertical stretch, I'm gonna stretch the sine function and just because I like to see some color in this thing. Notice that no, no matter how much I stretch, I can stretch as much as I want. And notice that the one thing that never changes are the x-intercepts. Sine of zero will always be zero. Sine of a million, or sorry, a million multiplied by the sine of zero. Well, the sine of zero is zero. Zero times a million is zero. This is just like when we were stretching polynomials, that the x-intercepts of a factored polynomial, no matter how much you stretch the function, stayed put. They stayed in one place. It's the same thing for sine and cosine. Nothing changes here. So that means that all those x-intercepts are all the same. The places where it's maximum, like for example, 90 degrees. Now mind you, I, I shifted cosine over, right? I did. So now they... I'm sort of taking this black curve now to be the sine function and this to be 1.8 multiplied by sine of x. As you can see, the amplitude is just 1 multiplied by 1.8, which is 1.8. So the amplitude has changed. The wavelength stays the same. The x-intercepts stay the same. Okay. Let's uh, move, let's move uh, a back to 1. And now let's, let's put n the shift on sine or cosine back to where back to where it should be normally so once again we see the sine and the cosine functions separate as as they should be you know they're they're separate functions and they're both periodic functions as as x increases as the as you move along the x axis remember the x axis is in degrees so as the degrees increase, number of degrees increase, sine and cosine will show, will show you that they will cycle through the same values over and over again. So once again, to re oh, well, actually, one thing I didn't show you. I did show you about amplitude, right? There's another thing that you can manipulate in these graphs, and that's the wavelength. So k, remember, is the wavelength. And I got it set up as the wavelength just for the sine function. You want to manipulate it for cosine, there's L. So I can stretch or compress L vertically uh, by manipulating this graph. And I'm just going to set it to 1 because 0 isn't very meaningful. Um, if you set it to 0, of course, you just get a horizontal line. So, and also notice that you, a negative k flips over the function, just like it does for polynomials. Again, the behavior is very much like the polynomials. So going to minus one, 
we've now just flipped over the sine function. The sine function now is going from positive to negative y values, whereas when it was 1, it was going from negative to positive sine values. It was going the other way. So flipping it over is, you know, one consequence. And of course, this becomes sine of negative x, which is really the same thing as this. I'm going to show you now. I'm going to set this to normal, to 1. Let's set a to minus 1, the, the, the stretch factor. Let's set it to minus 1. Notice we get identical function. It's going from positive, and as it crosses the y-axis, it becomes negative, just like k equals minus 1. And that's because um, there's something about the sine function that's very special that allows it to do that, and that is that sine of x is, a, is, a, is what we call an odd function, meaning that the sine of x has a peculiar kind of symmetry around the y-axis. In fact, we don't say that it has symmetry about the axis. We actually say it has symmetry about a point. It has point symmetry. It has symmetry on the origin in particular. That, that exact point makes it an odd function. Lots of functions have symmetry on various parts of the Cartesian plane, but when that point happens to be the origin, we call it an odd function. And for that, we build an equation that sine of negative x equals negative sine of x. And you can see that when we made a into negative 1, we got the same thing as making k into negative 1. Well, let's see how far the conspiracy goes. Let's see if we could do this with, uh, with cosine. Now, remember the stretch factor was b, whereas it was a for the other function. So if we make b into negative 1, we get this. Okay, so we flip it over. So that looks different. Let's set it back to normal and let's see how, how messing with k will change things. Well, not k really, but l. l is the, the cosis version of k. So let's make it into negative 1 and let's see what happens. Watch very, very carefully. Watch very carefully. See what I did there? So now cosis Cosa's horizontal stretch factor was changed to minus 1, and it caused a reflection on the y-axis. See any difference? You shouldn't. This is the exact same function. Cosine of negative x equals negative... Co oh, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> cosine of negative x, let me say it again. Cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. In other words... Making the angle negative gives you no different value in cosine than making the angle positive. They give you the same thing, but that magic only works for cosine. It doesn't work for sine. What kind of symmetry is this? Well, cosine, remember, had point symmetry. It had symmetry about the origin, whereas cosine has symmetry about an axis. Well, lots of things have symmetry about an axis. You know, like parabolas, right? They have symmetry about a vertical axis. What's so special about this one? Well, what's special about this one is that the axis of symmetry happens to be the y-axis, so we call it an even function. So an odd function has symmetry about the origin, whereas a uh, even function has symmetry about the y-axis. It can reflect on the y-axis and look exactly identical. Well, you can say that about parabolas. If a parabola has a vertex on the y-axis, then the axis of symmetry is on the y-axis. You flip it from side to side, you know, you flip it this way from side to side, uh, and you get the exact same parabola both times. Like, for example, let's say that we have f of x equals x squared. You know, that has an origin, you know, it has, it has a, a point at the origin for its vertex. And that means that the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Well, okay, so it has a vertical axis of symmetry, and it, has, and it happens to be the y-axis. Well, if we say, what is f of minus x? We substitute that into x squared, 
and the minus x gets, it, the minus sign vanishes because it's squared. And so that's why you get the same, the same curve no matter which way you flip it. Uh, that is, flip it in the in this way, not not this kind of flipping, but this kind of flipping, right? Uh, kind of hard to get my hand in the camera. Okay, so uh, there you go. There's the there's uh, some rather some rather really nice and peculiar things about sine and cosine that through their transformations you should come away with as sort of the the learning some of the things that you should learn and come away with not simply the fact that yes you can transform them in exactly the same way you transformed all the other functions but this one has a lot of other properties which we just discussed in this video and i hope uh i hope you um, make use of these patterns and remember them because they're really cool okay all right <laughs>